Championship. I'm your host Nimsh, and I'm here with all the casters, the the guys in the black shirts, the guys in the shirts which are, which are not black. Basically, wow. Lothar, <laughs> Noxious, Raven, and this is the grand final. The winner is getting ten thousand dollars. It's the loser. It's hard to call him the loser because he is getting five thousand dollars as well. Right, and the second place, which I mean, being in the final itself is a great accomplishment. And um, also, this is the first international Insomnia tournament, like uh, the big broadcast yep. tournament. So, it's quite, I would say it's very important to ha to to be in the first grand final because uh, I'm sure the second one will be coming soon, and this this might be one one of the most like um, viewed secrets in 2016, right? Absolutely, it might be the the end of the tournament, but this is the start of something great because Insomnia events will happen. We will have one in Scotland, one in uh, Ireland as well, and obviously in UK global insomnias in the future so this is this will be the first big insomnia champion yeah it's going to be huge and also like you said about the achievement of them being in the finals when you look at like the actual runs these players have had to make to get to the finals like yep. they've been it's pretty stacked on them and probably one of the most uh, uh, recently anyway so it's pretty huge absolutely and legendarin actually had one championships on the uk ground before he won gfinity and he qualified for the European Championships last year. So he is, maybe people don't know him that well. Some people even think he is from the UK. Noxious? No, nothing. <laughs> he is, I, I said nothing. He is not local. I know that. Um, I where's, mean, he, where's he from? He's from Sweden. No, I mean, the worst part is, I knew it, <laughs> but it slipped. You will always remember it now because you will probably say his nickname, which is Legendaren. Legendaren, yeah. The worst part is I know it because he said, my name, I go by the name Legendaren. I'm from Sweden. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> Thank you. And I said, he's a local. <laughs> totally, you know, UK players tends to win the grand final. No, it's not. It's not. There's no UK player. But he does play for London Conspiracy, which initially, it's a UK, that, that UK organization. was my organization. Yeah. It's like, oh, London Conspiracy. Yeah, he has to be. Yeah, so it's, uh, <laughs> so it, it's he a He is a Swedish player in disguise. It's like, you know, football teams. I almost said soccer. Football teams, you almost have no players from the country they're actually playing for these days. It's yeah. like, uh, they just import. That's players. actually true. It's, yeah, yeah, so basically, London Conspiracy is slowly turning into it, Manchester United. Uh, into global team, basically. Right? Yeah. And then, on the other hand, we have the second finalist, RDU from Team G2. And represent. <laughs> <He went> zug, <laughs> zug. <laughs> <laughs> His way here to the final was just amazing. Just losing in the very beginning. He was one of the invited players, but still, he was losing in the very beginning. Then he made it because of the three-way tie. He was offered another chance that he took it with his Druid deck. He got here, he faced life coach, an opponent he respects and fears. And by the skin of his thief, with literally, the dark, yeah. dark peddler into juggle into so far, he was able to make it. And we've just seen him win versus Visual a UK local who did extremely well himself. Yeah, I mean, uh, Visuals, as we said that earlier, he's got to be happy with his performance. He was super happy to just win the UK qualifier to actually get into the top 16 and then just progress from there. But said RDU again, we were discussing it after the uh, series as well. He played like, extremely solid in that last set. Yeah, he, he, had was... a, he had a lot of tough calls to make and made them all right. Yeah. Like, like, we couldn't tell that about the semi-final, uh, sorry, about the... Uh, the... Uh, quarterfinal yeah. how do you because his plays were mostly a really close calls to having to calling them misplays yeah uh, but in the semi-final he was spot top up. notch yeah. yeah yeah top notch top tier Harrison player yeah like in the video that's good yeah he, he he just came here to win the tournament right that's what he said yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I, I came here oh, why did you come here uh my name is rdu and i play for g2 esports and i came here to win the tournament well thank you uh, that <laughs> might just happen exactly so uh there's a chance that he does it so props to him for at least making it back when he was about to leave absolutely tiebreaker and uh both players they have really interesting decks as well because rdu is bringing like both play, play, players brought warlock but there is Zoo and Maligos, uh, Maligos Lock, so a bit different uh, setup there. There is Rogue from Legendaren, and Rogue was one of the MVP classes in the tournament so far. Druid from RDU, Druid from Legendaren, but again a difference. Legendaren is playing the aggressive Druid, and RDU is playing a standard mid-range one. Right. I, I feel like the Druid from uh, Legendaren, you know, the aggression that it packs, Usually you would say it, it, it lines up very well against uh, other decks, but the thing is, Artie is running two decks that are pretty aggressive and Zoo is able to push off the Paladin off the board. Assuming you're able to survive the early mini-bots, 
um, I mean, the, the, the early aggression that is Lepernome that you see from the, the Druid, followed by Aspirants, let's say, or Sabres, you have taunts. The Druid eventually has to go through the defend of Argus, the eggs get popped, everything kind of becomes awkward. So I think the Zoo from RDU has a decent chance in that case. Yeah, and then you look at the Rogue from Legend Dyer, and not only has a great matchup versus most Paladins, but how is it actually going to perform versus the highly aggressive list? that we've not really seen from anyone else so far. Normally, when you say Paladin, mid-range, secret, and maybe if someone brought Murlocs, you know, we'll see, but no. well, not normally one of the two, um, which Rogue no can normally deal with relatively well, but versus the aggro list, if, if the Paladin runs over him too quickly, it's something that Rogue definitely struggles with. Absolutely. We have six different decks, and the players are ready. Game one is starting right now. This is the final Insomnia True Silver Championship, ladies and gentlemen. Paladin versus Malilok. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Uh, like, is that a matchup as an aggro pally that you're happy to run into? Like, Maligos Warlock is usually able to, uh, you know, get some early game, but the thing is, the board clears they have may not be effective. I mean, there's not that a lot of heal, right? Right. Also, you have the access to Brand Bronzebeard Healbot, which is 16, which is like a practically Arena Jackson in the deck, yeah. right? <laughs> but you need two cards. Uh, but you have more stable deck also. So it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a very di uh, different matchup from what we have seen in the whole tournament, right? We didn't see that kind of matchup at, at all. No, not at all. RDU's been kind of flying under the radar since he went to the tiebreaker very quickly. We didn't get to see much of his, uh, much of his gameplay. Yeah, and now the Lepanom starts the game with a kick. Yeah, and what's a hug? Huh. Yeah, and look at RDU's hand overall. I mean, he's got mini bot, the Ardent Squire, abusive for the uh, trade ups, and even coin into Shredder if he really feels like he needs to later. So mm -hmm. he's definitely got the aggressive start he needs versus Maligos Lock to be able to just burst through maybe too quickly for that, uh, say, Bran Healbot combo to come off. Yeah. yeah, his hand looks pretty good, but then Legendarian has the fit mid Sir Finley Murgleton, and we've seen that uh, from AK Wonder in the very beginning. He took it early. And Sir Finley can be useful. Maybe you can just take heal, because this is an aggressive Paladin. If you just yeah. continuously deal with the board, at some point Paladin will run out of damage. And if you start healing like a priest, you may just survive there. Even Mage Ping would be OK. Yeah, Mage a Ping lot of one health. Bad. And it's not like Dru the Druid hero power where, or the rogue one, where you can chip for one damage, but you take the damage in return. Like The ping can be really nice to just uh, cherry pick which minions you just want to finish off there. By the way, Leper Gnome should have uh, another saying when he's being played, which is, should I give you a hand? No, no he's good. falling apart. Oh, that would be very cool when he dies. Yeah. <laughs> that when he dies, he should actually say that. 10 3 for RDU. Seems like a. Um, I mean, muster? In, no, I mean, no, no, no. Do you it's like the coin? The well, do you like the muster coin abusive to trade into the M Gang? Because then you can kill the 1 1 that comes out of it. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, very You're cool forcing play. Hellfire and then you go for the Shredder. Yeah, that, that's actually a very cool play. I like that a lot. Yeah, and you even have the uh, the second abusive to the, if the Hellfire doesn't come, you can continue to trade up with against the bigger minions from the Malagos. Yeah, which is the, the whole idea uh, of the deck, basically, is you're trying to be aggressive, force the clears, go face when you can, and then eventually you push with charge. You've got the two Blessings of Might, you have the, uh, the Kings, the you have like, a lot of damage that can just come out of the hand. Yep, and also with this board, he can... He's all, always just testing, does Legendarian have Hellfire? Because if he does, surely he'd use it this turn. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can see that it's not going to come down, so that gives uh, RDU a big heads up there and means he can either commit a bit more onto the board or then try and carry on with things, uh, any buffs that he gets as well. Yeah, that's a good point. And now, Legendarian is practically pushed to use um, the Imp Gang boss and the Sylvania thing. Yeah, just for the board presence, the one health, the one attack minion mm -hmm. with three health is good enough. And it might give you a hero power that you're happier to use. I mean, you can follow it up with a Blackwing Corruptor on five, kill something immediately, uh, and from there maybe reevaluate. Because right now, tapping is not an option, and replacing that hero power is almost always going to be better. Yeah, absolutely. He just needs to play the minions. And it seems like he goes for it. Sir Finley hits the board first. There is the mage hero wow. power. He immediately picks it. He was looking for that one specifically. Well, the rogue hero power wasn't bad either, right? It's a lot of face damage when you're not guaranteed heals. And the blessing of kings. Wow. That's the RDU. A huge deal. Oh, wait. Is it. Maybe you just go with the pilot shredder this turn? 
I don't dislike the Shredder, yeah. He, yeah. You know that the opponent doesn't have the Hellfire, yeah. doesn't have the Shadow Flame. Wait. Probably, right? Actually, wait. Abusive is better, right? Mm -hmm. You Abusive, you trade up, and then you Ardent Squire Hero Power. Do and you then trade up? I don't like trading up. You're really, that bad. I, I think you could bless, even Blessing of Kings the mini bot, and then just use the 2 1 and the 1 1. Uh, to go into Finley and then just leave the two four on the board. Why would, you, why would yeah. you kill Finley though? Uh, I mean, it's a one attack minion. Just because Finley's just going to chip away all your one ones anyway, so would you not rather it just clear it off the board for two minions? And then Hellfire is not as good anyway, because one, you've got a bigger minion and you've got less tokens on board, so Hellfire now just doesn't really, uh, yeah. really do too much. It has to be Hellfire Coil, and now the Black Queen Corruptor does not kill anything, which RDU absolutely knows. I mean, you can't even play the, the, well, you can play the Guardian, but it's going to feel really bad when the minibot just straight up kills it, so. And the other hand, you have the ping, right? So, if you play the Twilight Guardian right now, next turn you might just ping and finish off the shit in minibot, and then play Twilight Drake. I like that. I wouldn't even consider playing Twilight Drake now. Actually. I would consider playing Corruptor now. The Corruptor deals free damage to the uh, minibot, or the trade, so you, your opponent has to trade or lose to the ping the mini bot next turn, yeah. right? Yeah, it puts me in a really rough position because you don't want to trade with something that big. Yeah. But, um, you don't but want then, like, you can't leave the Corruptor alive either. You don't just want to leave your opponent with a 5-4. I think RDU will be perfectly content with uh, maybe Base. using the abusive with the weapon on the 1-1 one -one to kill the 5-4, get the 6-1, force two mana from his opponent to be used up just to deal with the 6-1 again, but... He's going for the Shredder. Develop all those sticky minions. So he... I actually don't like not um, don't like you not using the abuse of surgeon this time. No, I mean he can always a good opportunity use it, uh, to use it, right? Yeah, and you're pushing the opponent to maybe not even play the the pink, right? Because uh, he might just use a emperor in this situation, and then get a really good follow up and force you to trade away a multiple minions into it. Yeah, I could see that. Oh man, that ping! It was the first of many. Oh wow. Well, that's a oh, that's insane. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great. five damage and attack from at, at, attack from the weapon to kill the Twilight Guardian, you and you still have a huge just a minion on board. Yeah, abuse, just you just can abuse it. Abuse, abuse, abuse one of the one ones to kill the but Guardian you can as a three. Keeper of Ulduman, your abuse. Uh, the Argent Squire. The Argent yeah. Squire. That's what I'm talking about. Your Keeper of Ulduman on your abusive. Uh, sorry, on your Argent Squire and the abusive surgeon, the Argent Squire. So it has five attack. That's great. That's actually better. Yeah, yeah. that's better. Okay. Yeah, instead of negating, because yeah. basically you'd be dealing three damage to it, right? If you put it that way. Now, doing this, he's keeping the shield. Oh, oh wow! Oh. Keeping the shield Lady. on his Argent Squire, which makes it even better. It's a super mini bot. <laughs> if he goes for that. I think he actually would go for the Leroy Jenkins this turn. He knows there's no Hellfire. And he can kill the 1 ones now. So he can kill the 1 ones, still leave the uh, abusive. Uh, <laughs> what I have with Stop abusive. Stop calling <laughs> it the Argent Squire <laughs> on uh. board with the Divine Shield. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's true. He doesn't have to though, because Lyra Jenkins is still concealed damage. So, it's a fireball so hidden. It is, yeah. Why use the pilot shredder with the abuse of sudden instead of going to for keep the, the shield? I think so. I think this is like safe versus like the top deck Hellfire mm -hmm. or anything like that. Because yeah. now the shield, so well the Ardent Squire survives still as a three three. Um, so, Whereas and Hellfire the, and, ping. Yeah, and and the, and the three four. Yeah, this either Hellfire ping, but then the three four survives as a three one. So yeah. this is one damage of lethal or like close to it. What do you mean? It's well, he has to. It's seven, ten, thirteen, nineteen damage right now. So yeah, yeah, if you so don't use the soul fire, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. So like he has to use the soul fire. He can use the ping. So basically, he can slam the Twilight Drake. Drake. Yeah. That's pink, right. and then he might be forced to soul fire because it is a lot of damage. Let's hope for him he doesn't discard Bran and top deck heal bot because he'll <laughs> probably have very, very salty tears. All right, the worst card's out. There is still a chance for Bran heal bot. And not a massive battle, which is cool because that's st that stacks damage from the hero power. I'm right. sorry, from the from the hero attack. Yep. So that's fine for him. He has six, seven damage, eight damage this turn. You don't care about the Twilight Drake anymore, because that's not that's not the situation you just, you just play around. Yep. And as the turns go on as well, the odds on him drawing that blessing might. He has two in the deck, and we've not seen one yet. Yep. So Leroy is going to come out of nowhere, that's unless cool. Legend Iron can draw into well, actually, the he's playing around Shadow Flame in this situation. Yeah. If Hellfire comes out, he doesn't mind because that weakens the Warlock quite a bit. Dark Bomb, not exactly Never AOE. useful. Yeah. But that's just game, right? 
So you ping three, four, five, six, seven, and that, in fact, is exactly game, I think, despite the ping on the 1-1. One, one, the Leroy deals exactly fireball levels of damage to Legendary, which means that the Paladin from RDU not only will take a game, but maybe gets to sweep or, you know, take two decks with it. It is highly possible. Rogue should be weak to it, and then aggressive Druid might be weak to it as well, because you, you are bracing, like, both of you, and RDU has the Divine Shields and weapons. So that is a very important Jenkins. win, and yeah, with, with Leader Jenkins, RDU is actually taking game number one versus Legendarian in the final. It's the second time we'll see that RDU is finishing up the game with the Leader Jenkins. Yeah, and he's had it in hand for quite a while for both games, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the fireball with Lex. Yeah, <laughs> I remember how when it used to be four men, it was literally that. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, one other thing to keep in mind as well about uh, the deck that RDU is playing is that you remember the old, and I mean old, Tempo Rogue, right? There was a time where you would play Squire on one, and then maybe get the Tink Master out, give, like, take a chance. If the Squire becomes a 5-5, five -five, you're golden. If it becomes a 1-1, one -one, then you've used up the shield already, so you don't care. And the Keeper of Uldaman kind of functions in a similar way with the Squire. Yeah, and I kind of like the fact that you're always transitioning. The bigger and bigger minions from the early game that are useless become just greater with the Keeper. Yeah. Yeah, th this, this means that like, Keeper is a great card. Flexible. Right. And, and playable, absolutely. And it's an Iron Forge for Paladin, so make your pick. The light no, That's the I'm only way they could make the card, like, more reasonable. <laughs> they put it in the same slot as Shredder. Go. <laughs> Adio has a um, small problem, though. He saw that Legendarian kept three cards in his opening hand. Yeah. yeah. So that barriers. means... There's Backstep and Fan of Knives. And possibly play, SI play and everything else that you don't want to see, yeah. Maybe Agent. Mm -hmm. But most, most situations, what we would like to look for is the AoE. So Blade Flurries and Fan of Knives, because those are the MVP cards against this kind of Paladin. Yeah, I mean, if Fardu goes for the Abusive here, yes, he's playing slightly off curve, but would you play it if we're two mana in this spot? That's a question you always have to ask yourself. If the answer is yes, then you play it. If he plays Abusive Surgeon, then his cock hammer is really bad on Tint. Right. And he doesn't. I think he doesn't want to go for the massive of battle on Tint three. And not not against Rogue. He's afraid. He expects the fan of knives now. By the way, do we agree on the matchup? Because normally Rogue is really good versus Paladin, but this is aggressive Paladin with uh, with charge, with buffs, and Rogue might might struggle against that aggression. It's like face hunter kind of. But then it is weak to Master for Battle into Fun of Knives. And there are situations where Rogue can actually abuse. Um, yeah, I think, I think Rogue might be a little bit more OK versus this than Face Hunter, because the Paladin doesn't have the consistent damage from the hero power that the Hunter can push. But it, it's still a tough one. Like, with, with Legendarian's draw, then he's probably going to be feeling pretty good. But in general, I do still think the Rogue's going to struggle with any hyper-aggressive deck. There's the one card that is needed for RDU, which <laughs> is <laughs> <Sir Finley>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me Hunter now. <laughs> me go face. Yes. <laughs> well, he can also get uh, the daggers or even shapeshift. The something. daggers? You know what, the shapeshift and my shaman always scared me. Good thing paladins don't have anything as ridiculous. Well, they do actually have light justice. And if you have shapeshift, you suddenly... Oh, shift. goodness, I did not <laughs> think about that. <laughs> oh, no, that is nasty. Never again. Paladins, not even That's once. a very good setup for the Blessing of Kings next turn. Yeah, you saw Fan of Knives, what could yeah, go wrong? Exactly. And even now, oh, that's a low flurry. Flurry. That could go wrong. How much do you play into it? Because if you think about it, maybe Legendarian just wants to set up, uh, you know, the Violet Teacher right now. I think he, I think he'll actually go for it because um, I don't think he, he has. Oh, actually, you know what's the best? It's Farseer Dagger Kill One One. So you just coin out your dagger, yeah, kill one I of the one so. ones, and then we can uh, a Blessing of King minion, let's say, if it uh, gets buffed. Uh, yeah. It's kind of clunky. Why is it the best though? Because you set up a minion that will be trading in the future, yeah. you force your opponent to play Abusive Surgeons. Because the way how RDU plays is that he's actually trading a lot, yeah. right? So you can force him to overextend because with Farseer and Coin, kind of indicates he has no second AoE and he can just bluff the, the Blade Flurry here, right? Yeah, well, he's going for the Dagger and Keep, which means RDU is getting a Telegraph from his opponent that he's holding the AoE. It mostly is a telegraph. And now I think RDU, knowing that, is just going to play Lothab and go to town. Yeah. 
<laughs> what if it's a bluff? Well, what else is he going to do yeah, anyway? But that, the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like, what if it's a bluff? Yeah, well, you're still dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the loadup is just a great play this turn. Your opponent is, is pushed to play a minion instead. He's he's dead in the waters with the with the coin. Might backstab for five, kill the Lotha, but that's five to the face. Yeah. yeah. He's actually already pushed the rogue to 19 as well, and with Blessing of Kings in hand, yeah, that's all, all he needs coming. to do is draw the signature Leroy, and uh, he's looking at lethal pretty soon. Even Arkin Golem, and he still has yeah. that Cock Hammer, which is uh, dealing damage. And even though Le Legendarian has a lot of great cards, it, he only has Farseer to heal. Yeah, I suspect we're going to see uh, some kind of Tinker, Sharp Sword, Flurry next turn, or Backstab, or Flurry SI, depending on how big the minions get. Uh, it depends how many of them get just massive. So this is a very tricky turn. What do you think about Cockhammer? Uh, Cockhammer's good. To the face. It's you have really to think good. Yeah, you're setting up six to the face. You're setting up a fireball. Mm -hmm, exactly, for three mana. And you get the Divine Shield, which is very important against the Blade Flurry. Right? Because you can um, you can protect your low tap from an attack with, right, with, beforehand. The, with, the, with, right. the, with the weapon in case there's no backstab or agent. Right? I like actually Keeper of Uldaman on your 1-1 one -one, and then attacking into the Azure Drake with both dudes and playing Shield and e So you have, and going with Lotha face. Oh my god, yeah, he, he wants him to sap it! Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah. god! Up. Brilliant play. <laughs> that is actually genius, because now there's no way Legendarian can deal with this without a sap, almost no way. And if he does that, then I think RDU is just a happy guy. Well, there is no sub at the moment, so how do you kill the 9-9? Nine -nine? There are some spells <laughs> that's there. actually brilliant. I have to say that. That, that, that is, is just good. smart. It makes yeah. so much sense. It's perfect. So you have to go for backstab, a coin, SI, and then flurry. No, you can't flurry because you don't have prep. Yeah, GG. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you can do. Finish the game now. Concede. <laughs> is, it, is it just it? Like, he has seven mana still. I mean, you can Farseer and then die. You can... <laughs> That's a very good move, Touches. I mean, there's very... Like, honestly, if he buffs the, 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 the weapon with the oil, he goes up to six attack, right? So technically, he could backstab Flurry, but, like, I don't see at what point he's able... Because he can go Flurry with the oil, but then there's no SI, so he can't finish it off. There's, like, no way. No way to kill this. Yeah, I can't even think of one. Without Eviscerate in a spot like this, it's almost impossible. He might have to face tank, which I think... Uh, it's just not reasonable. If he face wow. times, he takes nine. So he has I was uh, expecting a backstab ASI on the 2 2, just because it removes damage from the board. And that's that's basically it. And oh, and it's just over champion. He didn't even need it. He, yeah. he had the, the call hammer. Yeah, but he, he just wanted to use the card from the top of the deck to take yeah. his opponent. <laughs> Our Everyone else is tilting. <laughs> 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 Everyone else is tilting. <laughs> Oh man, this is an awkward position for RDU because uh, he seems pretty comfortable. Normally, before he was he was losing <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, he had to go with the reverse sweep, right? And yeah. Now, now it's like, oh god, is it the other way around? Am I actually what do winning I do this? in this situation? <laughs> yeah, RDU is probably worried. He's like, justice must be coming because this can't happen, right? Uh, but we see Legendarian going to go for the last deck he's got, which is the Aggro Druid. This is the type of deck that can definitely just snowball out of control no matter what. Absolutely. But I think Paladin is still in a better position, because you do have those shielded minibots, you have weapons. So You, you have the Owl for the taunts as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you have ways to, to put more power on board early game, and if you win early game... That's you win the game. You basically win. Yeah. So we'll, right. see, we'll see. It obviously depends on the opening. Right now, RDU has the one drop, has the two drop, has the three drop. And he probably has to keep his hand fully. Even even though abusive is not the best one drop, it's still one drop that starts dealing damage early. Yeah, I mean you have to play. You have to play the abusive perhaps on the creeper though. If you're expecting something like an aspirant, the abusive on its own doesn't deal with it very well. It's just that it, it escalates the kill on the aspirant. You know, two turns later, but it does prevent. Like a one-drop play yeah. from the opponent. Uh-oh, that spells trouble for Druid RDU. Things. Druid things are happening right now. Yeah, Innovate Coin, that is like a Team Rocket start. But that Druid of the Claw, I mean, you coin out the Aspiring play Druid of the Claw turn two. It's uh, pretty good. <laughs> 
Yeah. Pretty damn good. At There's nothing the Paladin can do, right, besides blessing no, a light no. here? There's no way you can deal with a Donatus Aspirant if you coin that out. Has to be abusive, number two. Uh, you can have blessing, right? But that's such a, a massive oh, investment. No, no way you can play blessing and try to do Donatus Aspirant. No, no, no. Oh! No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't deal with this. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you can silence. Great play, my friend. Yeah, great play. Give him permanent mana crystal to end game faster. That way I can go home and sleep. <laughs> so this means we just play spiders here. Yeah. Mm. I mean, are you? I want you to carry on. You want just, me to yeah, just carry on with that for the whole game. No, I don't we think. We want to use train of thought. No, that wasn't RDU's accent. Really? No. It was close. No, RDU's accent is very it's specific to Romania. I'm not a vampire. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh god. Well, uh, this is makes sense strange. because of shapeshift, right? If there will be just a shapeshift, you want to deal with this. That's gonna hurt. Uh, it's tough. That's why the owl is there, right? The owl is there for situations like these. It, to, to it's still for six. Count. To kill, to kill <laughs> the two one, you know. And you get to curve with Lepernome, which is good. Yeah, but it is still a four six. I know it is. And and I, I want to <laughs> kindly remind you that we're <laughs> racing here, Doctor. <laughs> oh, we're racing. Never mind that. Sorry. Well, he has more minions. If there is no swipe, and there will be no swipe for the next turn, it's kind of looking okay -ish for RDU because he will just be constantly pressuring yeah. uh, his opponent. I assume that next turn will be Hero Power and Haunted Creeper if there will be no um, Blessing of Kings. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. See here, uh, I like the play that the uh, Legend Aaron made because. He doesn't commit a Raptor, it's unnecessary. Instead, you play a one-drop, kill one of his, his minions so he can't kill your 4-6. You limit the power and board, and then you push with your minion. You, you basically want to force, like, they both want to force each other to trade the minions. Yeah. Whoever starts trading first will be in a, in a worse position. Yeah, this is super weak to swipe, though. I think, I mean, if there's a swipe from Legendar in this turn, off the top, then if that's just If he has a over. swipe, he wins the game yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. at any given that's point true, of the game. True. So what are the is doing here is just like, well, I need to go all thick. He still has to do something, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. He has double mass of a battle, so why not go right now when yeah. he can just have more minions on board? Pick up a King's place, pick up a Blessing of Might, pick up this. Oh, wow. It, it is that's something. a great card. It's a 5-6, almost. So you play Keeper of Ulduman on your own minion. You have three, five, six, eight, nine damage this turn. I don't think you can afford racing, can you? Well, I'm just counting it. Yeah, yeah. Can he? So if there's Druid as Saber with Savage Roar, you get punished. You know there's no swipe, so that discounts a range of cards. Does he have a choice not to raise, actually? You may have yeah, to that's kill the, the four if six he trades, though, right? Will he just fall behind too much? I don't think so. Take, reducing four attack off the board while you're losing three and establishing three is probably worth the trade off. And he actually has cards in hand to replenish the board. Yeah. If he stops trading, he, he will have that card in hand. Better get lucky, mate. Ah. Mm. Not impressive. He not a 3 one, one. Yeah, it, it's way better than a 3 2 or 2 3. Yeah, I mean, a 3 2 here would have been devastating because the Raptor. Oh, oh the trade! <laughs> was Just so in good. time. Just I mean, uh, the swipe will still be a win the game card anyway. Yeah. It, uh, it will win the game, but. Not too early. Yeah, well, the thing is here, is, is are you not going to muster? Uh, yeah, well, you have to. You, you wouldn't not muster, right? Yeah, you have Because you didn't see the swipe beforehand. I can't see a world in which you can't you know. play around it anyway. Everything was awesome. You lived in a no swipe land. For a little while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. if he doesn't play muster, then he's playing around swipe very heavily. But nope. He does play uh, straight into... He can play on. Yeah, he, does, he has no choice. No choice at all. Is he going to go see that with his wife? I guess so. I, uh, I think, uh, knowing RDU, I don't think there's any chance that he sticks around after he sees combatants stay up. He doesn't have the answer. What's he going to top deck? True Silver, take another five, then die. I don't think uh, he's going to want to cope with that. Yeah. Get out of the game before the tilt. And you know, trying to see everything. <laughs> he's not tilting though. Not he's not the player. Everyone else is tilting. Everyone else still thinks that they don't concede fast enough. <laughs> Especially, especially because he is actually winning. He just eliminated two decks with the Paladin. So it's fine. RD concedes and Legendary gets the first game of the match with that Aggro Druid. Is Zoo favorite? I say yes. Aggro Druid? Yeah, I say Because so. you have Void Walkers, which are a great way to stop Lepernomes, great way to stop Living Roots. 
right? Uh, I got a good answer against uh, Dennis's aspirant. If you have the, um, if you have the abuser abuse sergeant, sergeant. Right? Yeah. on paper, uh, it's, it's actually a weird matchup because in the very beginning you, you trade a lot, and it seems like Zu wins the trade at some point, but then you have the combo. But then Fell Reaver hits, and you're like, oh. Well, I, I need POs for that. Yeah, I need to use all my power of Whelming yeah. or mill his deck in yeah. some cases. But, the but milling it never the deck happened. is most likely not very effective. Unless Dark Peddler, Goldshar Footman, your call, <laughs> Fell Reaver. <laughs> but that's the Peddler. Oh. The, best, the best way to win this is Sacred Druid is, again, pressure and make Zoo trade into your minions where you pressure, deal da enough damage to finish with uh, with the combo, and Zoo will actually deal damage to itself as well. Oh, well that looks like a good opening. Sick opening here for uh, RDU. What do you think about Knife Juggler turn one? Yeah, it looks to me like the best opener you could possibly hope for. And yeah. you can protect it for a while against a deck like this. Interface will be dreadful. Nope. <laughs> well, that needs to be done <laughs> as been now. And now, I think what RDU will do is just playing, he will play Peddler or the Egg and trade for the Nazis Aspirant. Ooh, because he is, I, I'm sure, 100% sure he will play around Keeper of the Grove. 100. You have to make the trade. There's no way you can let that Keeper yeah, come absolutely. out of the turn early. I wonder how the Raptor will perform. We haven't seen that much Raptor. Gonna get popped and spawn a 4-4. That's what it'll do. A 4-4? Four, four? <laughs> From the Raptor? Well, well from the egg. Spawn killing spawn killing spawn itself. The egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes you sense. You guys <laughs> are going to be the death of me. Wait, wh what are the stats of the Kval do? Uh, the Kvaldir is a 2-4. Two two okay. Yeah, it, it does kill this minion with the, with the Keeper. On the deck! No way! <laughs> what? Whoa, this it, is insane. Look actually, at that. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's going to go up to 2-3. What the? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> this one, what was that? Please, <laughs> nerf. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Ooh, and the Fall Reaver. RDU is lacking the PO, but he has the Peddler. And the Peddler is always giving what he wants. Yes, we know that. Yeah. We've seen Almost that. always. But, uh, well, he did get the PO in the first one. Well, just couldn't play it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And Peddler did carry him here. here. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like 25% chance to see PO. Hmm. About, like, it, it adds up to that because it's about, what, 30-ish cards, and you have four times the chances. Noxious mouth. So it's about, uh, yeah, from what I calculated, it's about, like, 25%. One time out of four, you see, like, Soulfire and PO. Do you even play the Death Rattles here? Because they are not looking that great, right? Yeah, you can't kill presence, the... But uh, the plus two attack doesn't necessarily give you anything because mm. you don't have swipe. You can bluff swipe with that if you attack with the Undertaker to the full one. Oh my god. It's like, oh, <laughs> you have this swipe for next turn. What do you do, bro? <laughs> that still might be the best play. I don't dislike the play just because you're following it up with uh, removal, but you might go face and bluff that swipe. Again, same idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you still go face because you want to pressure anyway. You want to make Zoo trade into your minions. That's basically what you want to do. Oh, and you would uh, just ignore the Raptor. That's my guess. I like that. It's good because it doesn't matter. If you go for Voidwalker, Direwolf, Flame Imp especially. Oh, oh it's a like Falder. Oh. Well, actually, there's a fall for waiting for that. Yeah. So it's not that horrible. But you have the Direwolf Alpha to also kill the Undertaker. And it's a great card, this though. It's actually perfect, though, because the Voidwalker really puts a stop to... Uh, Everything like if you and you here. don't need to buff the Undertaker. Uh, sorry, the, the Void Walker uh, with the Direwolf Alpha. I don't need a need for that. And I would actually want to see the Spectral yeah. Spiders being buffed yeah. next in for better trades. Yeah. Oh, but if the Vo Void Walker dries, you get you get the rest, right? Because I mean, he has to kill the Void Walker. Oh, oh my bad. goodness! All right, so it's not quite a good. It's still good, it's yet, still, it's but still it's good. not like this, the most amazing one because you don't get initiative afterwards. The thing is like. If Without the swipe, it didn't look that great. Yeah, I, mean, I guess if you swipe the 4-2 and you just kill the Voidwalker, yep. you're taking, however, five, I mean, six damage afterwards, um, which brings you down to 24, but you haven't taken any damage yet. Yeah, and you still have Keeper on turn 6 and the hero power. Or the Juggler. Or oh, just Fell Reaver. Options. All right, that uh, Defend of Argus looks pretty tasty. No, it's not there. Another Flame Imp. Yeah, that's that not horrible. It is bad because you are getting lower and lower with life top. You damage yourself, and this druid has force of nature. Well, look at that though. That, this yeah, that's could make. Pick. Oh wow, another PO. So there's power of whelming, young priestess, and undertaker. Those are the choices. Take your time, man. Bluff it. Pretend like think, it's not I good. I think it's the PO, right? You have to. You gotta shove all in. If you pick up 
anything that can deal damage next turn, you're just putting all your eggs in one basket. And PO is one of the best cards for the Druid. Even, you can use it to push, or you can use it to, to deal with something like Druid of the Claw with six toughness. True. Fell Reaver, Druid of the Claw, name Absolutely, it. Yeah. You have uh, that option now. I really like holding off on picking, because whether he's already decided or not, it does bluff to your opponent that, like, oh, okay, maybe I've got a hard choice here instead of just snap picking one. Yeah. And okay, well, that's definitely a good card if you just picked it. He takes the Young Priestess to prevent himself from getting blown out of the game from another swipe, perhaps, is my guess. I wonder what it, what will it buff. Well, oh. he's seen one swipe, and he wants more board presence. That's not what he wanted to see, though. That's the worst buff, I think. And we have to remember that this is actually the aggressive Druid. It's not the normal Druid. Right. So there are not that many taunts, uh, no instance of lore. If RDU is aggressive enough, he might actually outrun the Druid. But then Keeper is great. Yeah, I like Keeper here on the dog. And he can probably snipe one of the others. Snipe it! No, no that's actually a great... In defend of Argus right now for RDU. All right, now things are looking a little less grim. Very, very good, actually, because you, you, you Flame Imp, you buff the Peddler and the Flame Imp with the Defender, then you trade away... Uh, I mean, the, the Flame Imp in the middle and the, the Peddler, and you trade away into the 2-4, kill the 3-2, and keep going. Well, it's still just end up with what, like with three, three, and two, three. Yeah, but taunts. Fell Reaver doesn't matter. Force of Nature is going to be wasted. My question is, do you keep the Priestess? I think you keep it. Yeah. yeah. So you trade you the Peddler it away. It's such a great min uh, minion to buff up the taunted up minions, right? Yeah. That's exactly the thought. Yeah. Well, Priestess does something, right? And Peddler as a choo choo doesn't do anything anymore. That's right. I mean, so you buff up the Flame Imp and trade. Or do you buff, you buff both up, yeah, that you buff the both flame yeah. amps and just push. Go face. Yeah. That's such a tough turn, though. He might even think about using the PO to trade for the Keeper of the Grove, to be honest. And keep his flame amps? I, uh, ah, I don't actually, think that... That makes sense. You just buff everything that stays on the I, I don't think it's correct, but uh, it's a tough call. This is kind of what we expected, and now due to the claw, not going to do too much work. This hand right now from Legendarian is exactly the type of stuff you don't want to be stuck with. Yeah, and that's one of the cards that can get dealt with with the PO on the Young Priestess. Can he even afford not... He just slumped for uh -oh. Reaper. That's the biggest minion. Yeah, you got to hope that it works. And it, in this case, what it does is, worst case scenario, it opens up the board for you to push with more damage later on. Yeah, because also, if the Fell Reaver can get rid of that flame, even Drew to the Claw Charge to just remove a minion and then get rid of his guard. Arjun Squire PO really opens up the board. My question is, do you trade away your two small minions with the PO to keep the flame imp taunted up? Because I feel like that taunt is worth a lot more. Yeah, the, the taunt will be very valuable. I think like you have to just sacrifice the uh, the priestess and the defense of Argus here. It's a tricky situation because if you spend damage killing the Fell Reaver, you will kill the Druid slower, and most of the cards the Druid will draw actually deal damage. Combo, sure, but the imp doesn't uh, the imp doesn't die. Yeah, the M doesn't die yet. But then, like, Savager, for example, with the hero power is free damage. Hey. Second so Keeper of the Grove. He does get to see what comes out, though. He doesn't see anything that he wants to delete from the deck just yet. No Force of Nature, no Savage Roar. Oh, actually, that's a very big Saber deal. is gone, yeah. Saber. Only one left. The mana is awkward. You can't really... Unless you play Pilot Shredder and Saber, you have to taunt up the Druid, That's right? probably what you do. No, you don't. You can play Pilot, Shredder, and uh, the Saber, actually. Oh, sure. Yeah, I think you have enough health to be able to play around with that and then go into uh, Taunt next turn. Druid of the Claw might uh, not ever see see the Taunt, because if you yeah. go for Stealth, the Saber actually counters the 4 free, and then Druid of the Claw might charge with something like uh, Savature. Makes sense. I mean, you're, you're playing around uh, the Doom Guard as well. Uh, even, like, if you don't get the Savature, the next turn, are you plays nothing big, you just charge face, and that's a 4-4 that has to die. I think what Legendarian should do is, in this situation, just play the Polish Shredder and the Saber, yeah. but charge it and kill the Flame and instantly. Just, what is With the hero power, I see, yeah. Yeah, with the hero it's power. It's just guaranteed. Guaranteed yeah. trade. Well, this is exactly what RDU wanted. He gets oh to kill the 4-6 with the Dire wow. <laughs> and the Doom Guard, not discarding anything, not even having to tap. Yeah, and he can go face with the Doom Guard with buff oh. attack as well. The Doom Guard. Probably just the Squire and the Imp. Oh, it's, right? yeah, oh yeah, you're right, right. It's, it's much better, yeah. You yeah. want to talk. Oh, man. Now, this is looking tough for, for Legendarian. He has no way of killing that minion. 
It is, this is 10 damage, so it's almost over. RDU just needs 3 points of damage here. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, right now, if Force of Nature is top decked by uh, Legendary and he wins next turn, but we'll see what RDU picks up. That's a lifesaver. That's my god, that's almost lethal. That's almost lethal. That was one damage, actually. That's one. You can't play it bef between the wolf and the minions. So, well, tap just, first, I right? Mean, the problem is. Might as well. Savage Roar might be lethal. You can tap. That's game, Savage right? Yeah, oh, yeah that that's is. game. That's game. Yeah. Yeah, because you had plus three damage, right? Yeah, he just needed two. Yeah, wow. Perfect. There we go. RDU is your champion. He's taking this game and winning versus Legendarian here. Throwing all the decks on the back of his aggressive Paladin and Zoo. Uh, nicely done, RDU. You saw that smile at the end there. I came to win and I won. And again, yeah. for, for RDU, he, he's won the whole tournament and he brought Aggro Paladin, a deck that no one even probably would have even guessed that would have been brought to the tournament. With the power of Secret Paladin that we've seen in the meta for the past few months, yeah. even and then the resurgence of mid-range Paladin, say, and then Adi's like, yeah, I'm just gonna play Aggro Paladin, and it, and it worked. Super like, JJ crazy. was laughing at him earlier. He was saying, that deck is way too janky. Why are you playing that? Or he was like, no, I think it's good. Well, to be, to be honest, there's a lot of decks that actually draw cards. And, yeah. uh, I was talking to, to Slypha before, and he was surprised that there are so many rogues. He was expecting a lot of aggressive decks. This deck is really good versus rogues. Rogues do love to draw cards, and you can be aggressive versus them as well. Yeah, and you, they use preps very early, so there's no retraw very often, so they end up like scrambling for answers. And that's kind of the, the, what you want to do against rogues. Like in Between turn one and three, if you can just push, and they, are, they end up not having the flurry, then you end up uh, winning the game on the back of that. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think we have our deal here. Oh, yeah. Better be. Perfect. So uh, our deal will join us in just a moment. We might not have the mic for him. There he is. All right, let's here's RDU. Actually, RDU, let's, uh, let's go into the middle. Oh, yeah, right. All right. So, RDU, there's, this is your mic. This is your manager. <laughs> All right, RDU, first, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. man. Um, how, how do you feel now? I feel really good because uh, <laughs> I never expected it. Like, in the first day, as most of you might know, I started 0 2. So, at zero two, I was like, okay, now I just want to go home, forget about the tournament, stop practice more because I played really badly in the first day. And then in the tiebreaker, then I managed to win one more. I mean, I just played for like whatever. I managed to win it, the last one. And then somehow the results happened in such a way that I got to tiebreakers. In tiebreakers, I really focused because I was given a chance that I didn't feel that I deserve. And I played my best. I won the tiebreakers. And then... The game versus life coach, man. Tell me about it. Um, I made a lot of misplays, I think, but he also made a lot of misplays. It was like a very tension series, and uh, it's very hard to play on stage. So I think uh, it was like the hardest series for me of the tournament. Uh, afterwards, I just uh, gained composure because beating a, a player of the caliber of life coach, I think that I can beat anyone afterwards. So. Uh, I just uh, yoloed and won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's exactly And everyone it. is still thing, right? Yeah. Uh, well, you came here to win, man. Congratulations, you did. Thank you very much. Can I give some shout outs, please? Of course. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So, big shout out to my practice partners, Crane and Super JJ. And big shout out to my team for being super awesome. Yeah, well done. Aww. Well done. <laughs> All right, that's I think it's a good moment to actually give you the trophy. So, okay. we have the trophy here for you. This is yours, man. I don't know how you we were going to transport it with the airplane, but this is your trophy. You're the Insomnia True Silver champion. Oh, oh. <laughs> the trophy it's is heavy, by the is, way. It is super heavy. Congratulations yeah. again, RDU, congratulations. This table may or may not hold. <laughs> yeah. So that was excellently played. Guys. Congratulations, man. Do you have yeah, anything nice to say about that series? Kind of applause, yes, yeah, no, maybe. Let's do it. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was kind of a uh, awesome. small hand of applause. This trophy is very, very... Heavy. 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 Good. Heavy. It's like 10 <laughs> kilograms, I think. It's it's a big responsibility. It's really <laughs> heavy because, you know, you're the first global Insomnia champion, even though this is the 56th Insomnia event. Feels good, man. <laughs> Seems good. Seems good. It All does right. feel good, too, I imagine. Guys, it was an amazing, amazing, amazing event. It started online with the qualifiers. We had a global qualifier, UK qualifier. Then we had here the, the LAN qualifier and two amazing days, amazing games. Just before we sign off, what are your favorite moments, Noxious? Um, I'm going to have to go with the, uh, the Hunter versus Zoo. 
with RDU, where the Hunter did not lower the health of the minions to one to play around the defend of Argus, yeah. which suddenly, I think in that process, Visual learned a very important lesson, <laughs> because he was telling us how it, you know, he thought he didn't, he wouldn't make it through. He felt like he didn't have the experience. That must have been an experience in the first place. Like you, from now on, he's always going to play around that. I like that. The thing is that like the pressure is very high on the stage, yeah. and it's super easy to forget some small things, and then, then the small things are gonna come back and bite you. So it's tough to play Hearthstone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd hear those words. That's, 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 a, good. that's a good information. Yeah. Raven, favorite moment? Uh, yeah, less of an in-game moment, and more just seeing what the top eight looked like was really good. So it was a spread from the invited players, players who turned up, some UK players as well. So overall, just a really good top eight for the first uh, sort of uh, enlarged Insomnia Hearthstone tournament. All right, Lothar? I think the uh, Dark Peddler into Soulfire into 33% knife juggle, <laughs> but that was the second knife juggle for the 33% of the first yeah. one. Yeah. But that was my favorite moment. Granted. That was a pretty good moment. And for me, uh, before I give you the mic, <laughs> for me, for me, my favorite moment was uh, JJ versus Legendarian, Rogue versus Druid, which they, they, they just couldn't oh. kill each other. That was insane. That game was, that so was insane. Are your favorite moments besides winning? <laughs> um, the killing blow. Throwing the soul fire from the peddler after I uh, failed with the first peddler. And then hitting the knife jack, I was like, yes. <laughs> uh, one more thing, if I can mention it. Um, I want to also give a shout out to Herudra for the Zoo list. Like, I just saw him streaming and I thought it's a cool deck, so I just changed two cards and I got it. And big thanks to Taj for fixing my Druid list because my Druid list was awful and he told me how to fix it. So big thanks to Taj. All right, that's, uh, that's good. And we finished on a good notion, so I just want to thank everybody here. Thank you, Noxious, Raven, Lothar, for, for casting with me. And uh, thanks to the production team, thanks to Multiplayer for uh, making this, this event happen. That was an amazing event. Obviously, thank, big thanks to the viewers and uh, just watching us right now. So from me, from the crew here, from Insomnia, with all those people, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time at Good Night.